Bible, here we go. I want you to go ahead and open up your Bible to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 19 is where we're going to be at today. Uh, today. Today is not a word, if you're wondering. It's today. Today, we're in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. And um, as I was getting ready for today, uh, several weeks ago, um, I, I, I read this story, and this is a true story, by the way. I read a story about a guy named Thomas Martinez. Thomas Martinez was a homeless man in Bolivia. And in the year 2000, Thomas Martinez got word that the police in Bolivia were looking for him. And Thomas Martinez was convinced that they were looking for him because he was an avid drug user and he sold drugs. So they were, he was convinced they're after me because they know that I've got drugs, that I'm selling them. So Thomas flees from the police. He's homeless, a couple people know him, but Thomas goes into hiding because he's convinced he's about to get busted. But the problem was that wasn't what the cops wanted him for. In reality, the cops were looking for Thomas Martinez in Bolivia in the year 2000 because Thomas' ex-wife had just passed away. And since their divorce, a lot of things had happened in her life and she had come into a very large fortune. And her and Thomas, their, their marriage ended on, a good, on good terms. Actually, she didn't, she didn't have any ill will or bitterness towards Thomas at all. And in her will, she left Thomas Martinez $6 million. But Thomas was on the run. And to this day, they have never found Thomas Martinez. Think about that for a second. Would you just think about that? Isn't that awful? Isn't that crazy? So here's a guy, and again, that's a true story. Here's a guy on the run. He's homeless. He's convinced he's about to go to jail. The cops are on his tail. He thinks it's all over. In reality, this man's a millionaire. But he lives like he's homeless. In, in fact, the, the, the newspaper in Bolivia got word of what was happening, and they put out a headline about this story, and they said, Millionaire paradoxically unaware of his fortune. So there's a guy out here on the streets of Bolivia, they said, who's a millionaire, but he doesn't live like it. Who's rich, but looks like he's poor. And so we hear that story and we think, oh my gosh, that's so awful. That's, that's horrible that that man's living in, and he's running around. He's, who knows if he's alive or dead right now. Again, they've never found him. But he's homeless and he's a millionaire. That is awful. And the reality is that we do it all the time. The reality is, the truth of the matter is that you and I, we can do that every single day. So if you're here today and you're a Jesus follower, you're a Christian you, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And every week in this series, we've been talking about the relentless love of God. The love of God has changed your life, and, it, and, it's, and it's inside of you. You've been forgiven for all of your sins. There's no condemnation for you. You've got a relationship with God. That's what you have. It's yours today. And yet so many Christians go through life and never experience the benefits of any of that. Or you're here today and you're not a Christian. Maybe you, maybe you just came because somebody invited you. I don't know what got you in the seat today. But you're here today. You're not a Jesus follower. You're not a Christian. And we can do the same thing. That you can do the same thing as well. Because on the table in front of you today is total forgiveness from God. On the table in front of you today is purpose for your life. On the table in front of you today is hope for your life. On the table in front of you is eternal life. And to have that on the table in front of you and to look at it and say, no thanks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep doing this on my own. We're just like Thomas Martinez, who millionaires, but we live poor. Millionaires, the Bible says actually that we have a spiritual inheritance if you're a Jesus follower, and yet so many people never experience the benefit of that inheritance. Well, if you've got a Bible, I hope that you've already turned it on on your phone, your mobile device, whatever you've got to, Ephesians chapter 3. And if you, if you don't have a Bible on you at all in any way, shape, or form, don't worry about it because the words are going to be on the screen behind me here in just a moment. But we're going to read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. I'm going to go ahead and read this here. Let's read this together. It says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power 
through His Spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. See, the book of Ephesians is a letter from the same guy we quoted earlier from the book of Philippians. The book of Ephesians is written by a guy named Paul. Paul wasn't always a Christian. You can read about how he met G Jesus in a book in the Bible called Acts. Actually, Paul used to hate Christians. Maybe that's you today. You, you hate Christianity. You think this is all a joke. You think there's no way this Jesus thing can be true. Hey, you know what? You're in good company because the guy that wrote most of the New Testament is right where it used to be right where you're at now. But he meets Jesus in Acts chapter 9. God radically changes his life. And like I said, he writes most of the New Testament. And Paul writes this letter from prison. And this is a really personal passage of scripture that we just read because this is actually i don't know if you can pick it up or not this is actually a prayer this is actually a prayer that paul writes to this church in a city called ephesus that's why it's called ephesians so it's to a church there but by extension it's a prayer for you and me and so here's what we know at a deeper level we say this all the time god wrote the bible okay love to have a conversation with you about that if you're not there yet but god wrote the Bible. And so Paul actually wrote this by hand, but behind Paul writing was God writing. And God inspired Paul. God gave Paul the words to say. So yeah, this is a, pra a prayer that God prays, but here's how I want us to look at it. This is a prayer that God prays. Yeah, Paul is praying this prayer, but God is praying this prayer too. This is a prayer from God for us. This is something that God wants in my life and in your life and in your family and in our church. And what God is praying for is that we would not be like Thomas Martinez. Who would have a massive spiritual inheritance. That we would be millionaires spiritually. And we never experience the benefits of what we have. So well, what's the benefits of it? What's the, what's the benefit of the love of God in your life? We've talked about the love of God, the relentless love of God. We've talked about the jealous love of God. And if you've been doing the relentless devotional every single day, we've been talking about all kinds of things about the love of God. What's the benefit of it all? What's the benefit of the love of God in your life? God actually says it. Paul writes it down in verse 17. Listen to verse 17 again. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, watch this, that you being rooted and grounded in love. What's the benefit of the love of God in your life? The benefit of the love of God in your life and in my life is that we would be rooted and grounded in that love. God wants us to be rooted and grounded people. Ask yourself quickly, does that describe you? Would anybody you know, would the people that live with you describe you as a rooted and grounded person? Or would the people that live with you describe you as a stressed out person? as an anxious person, as a person that freaks out all the time? Would the people around you in your life, would they describe you as a rooted and grounded person? Listen, I'll just be honest. I'll lay my cards on the table. I don't feel rooted and grounded a lot of times. In fact, if God gave a description to me a lot of times, I feel like my description would be uncertain and moody. Anybody else? Right? Maybe you're sitting there in that seat and you say, well, listen, I know that God loves me. I know that God loves me. Well, then why are you so freaked out all the time? Oh, I know that God loves me. Well, then why do you spend so much time trying to impress people that ultimately don't matter? Or if you know that God loves you, then why do you think that more money will solve all your problems? Oh, I know that God loves me. Oh, well, if you know that God loves you, well, then why do you think that having sex with that guy or sex with that girl or going out with that person, why do you think that will make your life happy? Why do you think more square footage will complete your life if you really know that God loves you? Can I tell you my biggest problem? Let me tell you my biggest problem today. And listen, we're among friends. I mean, it's clear, you, it's clear that these are the people who are going to heaven because y'all braved the elements. Amen. Let's be real. Like, you all are going to heaven. I don't know about anybody else. Everybody else here is. Okay? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right? But let's just be honest for a second. You know what? Let's just be real 
for a moment and confess. A lot of times we don't feel rooted and grounded. Here's my biggest problem. My biggest problem, you know what it is? I know that God loves me here. But there's a lot of places here I don't know it yet. There's a lot of places in my mind I know that God loves me. Yeah, I can preach sermons about the love of God and I can talk about God's love. But listen to me, there's a lot of places in my heart, the center of who I am, the the driving force of my life, there are places here in my heart where I don't know the love of God yet. It hasn't sunk in to my life. And listen, Summit, I'm telling you that the more the love of God goes from here to here, it will drive fear out of your life. It'll drive insecurity out of your life. You'll become a more stable person, more confident person. You'll become a more bold person. God wants to change us at the deepest level of who we are. How's that happen? When what we know about the love of God goes from here to here. See, God wants you to be a rooted and grounded person. Person, not driven by your emotions, not driven by your circumstance, not driven by the next paycheck, not driven by what the weather forecast, not driven by what people put on social media, rooted and grounded. I don't know about you, but I want to know how to get there. Like, like I am in on that. I want to know how I, Mark Holmes, can become a rooted and grounded person. So that's what I want to do today. I want to talk to us about how getting, to, how getting what we know about the love of God, how getting what we have here into here. Some of you, that's exactly what you need to do today. Intellectually, you know that Jesus, yeah, you believe that there was a man named Jesus, and yeah, you believe that maybe the Bible was written by God, and yeah, you believe that God loves you, but it's never hit you here the way that it needs to, so that you, there's never been a point in your life where you said, I need Jesus to save Me, yeah, you know a lot of facts about the Bible, but what you know about the Bible, it hasn't impacted your heart in a saving way. Or maybe you're here today and you're a Christian, you're a Jesus follower, and God has opened your heart, God has changed your life by His love, but there's a lot of areas in your life where you're hearing this and God's already speaking to you, and there's a lot of areas in your heart where you feel unstable, uncertain, the exact opposite of rooted and grounded. And God is saying to you today, it is time to put some roots down. It is time to put some roots down. So how? How can what we have here go here at a deeper level? How can we be rooted and grounded? That's what I want to talk about today. And what you need to know if you're taking notes, and if you're not taking notes, you should, because what we're doing today is we're talking about something that we are doing every single day. Because becoming a rooted and grounded person isn't something that isn't a decision you make at church, and you never have to make that decision again. I don't know if you knew that or not. That's not how it works. And here's why. Because you don't know what's going to happen to you this afternoon. You don't know the phone call that you're going to get this week. Being a rooted and grounded person, that's something that you have to do every single day. There are things that you've got to execute in your life if you want what you have about the love of God to go here to here. You want to be rooted and grounded. It's got to be in intentional things that you do every day. It's an everyday thing. Every day. So I was thinking, about, I was thinking when I was putting this together, what is something... Because I want this to be something you can take with you, okay? What is something that you and I do every single day? And I thought of it. We eat. We eat every day. How many people eat every day? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Some of you are not raising your hand. That's weird. That's real weird. Like, Like we eat every single day day. And so here's what I did. So, so to break this down, what we're about to talk about, I made an acronym, okay? Now, I've never done this before. This is a big moment in the history of our church. I've never used an acronym. So are you excited? You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. It's okay. It's a snow day. I'm going to do this anyway. Here's how this works. If you want to be rooted and grounded, you need to eat every day. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to eat something. Some of y'all got a little too excited. You need to eat something. Right? So here we go. Here we go. E. Here's E. Experience. You want to eat something every day? You want to become a rooted and grounded person? How's it start? You need to experience something every single day. Let's talk about it. Look at verse 16. I love what, what he says in verse 16. According to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit. Watch this. Watch. 
Watch. In your where? Inner being. In your inner being. I read that Americans spend $60 billion a year on trying to lose weight. Did you know that? $60 billion, y'all, with a B. $60 billion a year trying to lose weight. And that includes all kinds of stuff. That includes, that includes, that includes weight lo- like, like weight loss programs. That includes certain kinds of food. That includes buying exercise equipment that three weeks later you're hanging your dirty clothes on. Right? $60 billion a year on the outside trying to look good, trying to get six-pack abs, trying to get bikini body ready. Anybody amen? I can't believe some of y'all amen that. Um, right? $60 billion on the outside. But listen to me, listen to me. Did you know there's a part of you that you can't see? Let me say that again. Did you know that there is a part of you that you cannot see? I'm going to talk about it next week in the first week of expiration date. Have you, you've heard it said that when you die, you can't take it with you. Have you heard that? That's not totally true. The main thing you will take with you. You know what the main thing is? Your soul. Your soul is the main part of you that you will always have. And when you die, you will take it with you. And some of you, you are so burned out, you are so freaked out, you are so stressed, and you couldn't take another vacation and another Sunday afternoon nap, and you wake up and you get back, and nothing's changed, and here's why. It's because we're doing a lot for the outside, but we're neglecting the inside. It's because on the soul level, you are burned out. And becoming a rooted and grounded person, listen to me, happens at the soul level. Let me ask you a question maybe nobody's ever asked you. How is your soul today? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1, my soul is fried, my soul is in horrible shape. 10, my soul is great, I couldn't be closer to Jesus. How is your soul today? I don't know, you need to know. Because becoming a rooted and grounded person happens at the soul level. There is a part of you that you cannot see and it will never die. And when you die, you will take it with you. How is that part of you, Summit? You need to know. God doesn't want the knowledge that we have about His love to be surface level in our heads. Let's talk. No, God wants His love to impact my soul. Every day, all day. He wants us to experience it. Experience His love in our soul. How do we do that? How can we experience God's love in our soul? Here's the next one, A, absorb. We're going to absorb something. We're going to take something in. We're going to take something that's outside of us and make it a part of us. Actually, let me give you maybe a new word for some of you. It's the word meditate. Meditate. You ever heard that word meditate? Here's what meditate, some of you, when you think about meditation, meditation is not sitting on the floor with your legs crossed. Um, that's not meditation. That's not what I'm talking about right now. Here's what meditation is. Meditation is taking the Bible, God's Word, filling your mind with God's Word. Thinking about God's Word until it goes down deep into your soul. Until it changes a mood, until it changes a feeling. Grabbing something from God's Word and chewing on it and rolling it over in your mind and thinking about it over and over. Where am I at and what is God saying to me? This is what God's saying to me. Why am I so stressed out? This is what God is saying to me. Why am I so angry right now? Meditation is grabbing God's truth and taking it in, absorbing it into your life. Paul shows us how to do it. In fact, Paul shows us how to do it with the love of God in the passage that we just read. So Paul says this. So Paul takes the love of God and and holds it up to to a light like a diamond. And and so so that when the light hits hits the different aspects of that diamond, all of a sudden he can see all kinds of different angles. He can see all kinds of different nuances there in the diamond. And so Paul is taking the love of God, holding it up to the light, and he's just thinking about it over and over and over. So he says this about the love of God. He says that the love of God is wide. Did you see that? He says it here in verse 18. He says, May you have strength to comprehend with all the saints 
what is the width of the love of God. Listen, did you know that God's love is wide? God's love is so wide that it, it, it encompasses every single person in this room right now. God's love is so wide that there isn't a person in Hazard, Eastern Kentucky, in this state, in this world, seven billion people strong, that God's love doesn't cover. God's love is wide. God's love is so wide that it covers the darkest thing that you have ever done. God's love is so wide that the Bible says when we go to Jesus and ask Jesus to forgive us for our sins, he takes our sin and the book of Psalms says that Jesus takes that sin and throws it as far as the east is from the west. How far is that? As far as possible. It's wide. God's love is wide for you. Not only is God's love wide for you, God's love is long, he says. God's love is Long, I love this promise from, first, uh, from Philippians, rather, chapter 1, verse 6. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, watch this, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I get this question all the time, and people come to me, and they say, Mark, I did this, have I gone too far? Mark, I did this. Have, have, has God taken his love away from me? I get this question all the time. Mark, I did this. I told God I would never do it again. Have I lost my salvation? Have I went too far? And I want to say to us today that God never gives anyone his love and then takes it back. Did you hear that? God never gives anyone his love and then takes it back. And here's why. Because your effort didn't cause God to love you in the first place. God just chose to love you. Your effort didn't cause God to love you. And listen to me, your effort doesn't cause God to keep loving you because God's love for all of us is in Christ. And so God never gives his love to you. If you're here today, you're a believer. God doesn't give his love to you and then say, oh wait, you're too messed up. Taking it away. God's love is Long. See, we have this idea, instead of God's love being really wide and really long, we think that God's love is really short and real narrow. Don't we? So that if you, if you drop the ball one time and you all of a sudden use a word that you shouldn't use, it's over, you're going to hell. You wear jeans to church, it's over. Right? You mess up. It's over because we have this idea that God's love is really thin and it's really narrow when really it's really wide and really long and your effort doesn't get God to love you and your effort doesn't keep God loving you. God loves you in Christ. Well, Mark, isn't that a license to do whatever you want? No. No. Because listen to me, when this love goes from here to here, it captures your heart so that all of a sudden you want to live in a different way. So if you're here today and you say, you know what, I'm a Christian, but I can do whatever I want. I can sin however I want. I don't have any conviction. I don't have any second thoughts about it. At the end of the day, I'm just going to go to heaven. That's all I'm worried about, and that's all God's worried about. It doesn't matter how I live. If that's where you think you are today and you think it's okay with you and God, you need to check your conversion at the door. You need to check your conversion. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to let you rest well there. God's love is long. Not only is God's love long, he says that God's love is really high. He says it's got breadth, it's got length, it's got height. Paul says this in Romans chapter 8, Romans 8, 8, 39. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No height can separate us from the love of God. God's love is wide. God's love is long. God's love is high. Not only does he, he doesn't stop there though, he says God's love is deep. God's love is deep. And there is somebody in this room or you are listening to the podcast and you are saying, Mark, I have, I'm at the lowest point I've ever been in in my life and I want to say to you, Jesus went lower. Or you're in that seat and you feel like you're at the darkest place of your life, and I want to say to you that Jesus went darker. Or you're listening to this podcast, and you think that you have never been more alone in your life, never been more abandoned in your life. Jesus was more alone. Jesus was more abandoned. Because on the cross, there was a point when the sun was blackened out, and right in the middle of the afternoon, it got as dark as night, and Jesus screamed out, My God, why have you forsaken me? God, where'd you go? 
What's that mean? It means that Jesus faced hell for you. You think you're low, Jesus went lower for you because he loves you. You think you've went too far, Jesus went further for you because he loves you. God's love is deep. And so Paul holds up the love of God because Paul knows that he needs to get he needs that love of God to go down deep into his so he experiences it. He absorbs it. And what that does, it creates in Paul the final thing. T is for thirst. Look at this verse. Psalm 63 verse 1 says, My soul thirsts for you. My soul thirsts for you. And we're done with this sermon. And I don't know what you've got planned for the rest of the day as you're getting ready for the snow. But I had this conversation this week. And it is a conversation I have every week. Mark, I used to be so close to God, and I don't feel it anymore. And I quit coming to Summit, and I've quit reading my Bible, and I've quit all this stuff. Mark, I've quit all, because I don't feel it anymore. I want to feel what I used to feel. Can anybody relate to that? I want to feel what I used to feel. I want to be where I used to be with God. Tell me what I need to do to get that feeling back. Because here's what they thought, and here's what I used to think, and here's what some of you think right now. We think that what needs to happen is the feeling comes first, and then the action. But it never works that way. Feelings never come before action. Instead, and here's what I told them, and here's what I'll tell you if that's you today. I said, you know what you need to do? You need to do what you used to do when you felt the love of God burning in your life. Do what you used to do. Action always precedes feeling. Action always comes first, and then feeling comes later. You start being faithful in church. You start getting into God's word every day. You get to that place where you say, God, I got to experience your love deep in my soul. Jesus, I need to hear your voice. God, I want to burn for you. We talked about that last week. Jesus, create a thirst in me. And even when you don't feel it, you go to church. And even when you don't feel it, you pray. And even when you don't feel it, you take about five minutes. I don't care where you got to do it, on your lunch break, in your homeroom, in a chair at your house before you leave. And you open up the Bible on your phone. You open up a physical copy of God's Word. Say, God, I want to hear from you. And you do that even when you don't feel it. You show up and you stay faithful and you stay faithful and you stay faithful. And eventually God will show up. And when God shows up, you will experience the love of God burning deep in your soul. Don't sit there and say, well, I'm not feeling anything at church. I quit church. No, no, no. You've got to stay faithful in that thing. You've got to stay faithful in prayer, Summit. You've got to stay faithful in, in the Word of God. I, I used to not be a hand lifter when we were singing in church. You know what a hand lifter is? I know what a hand lifter is. Here's a hand lifter. You ever seen those people that sing and they do this right here? Some of you, that's weird. They're like, are they letting their armpits air out? Why are they, are they do that for it? Dude, I'm glad I don't sit next to that dude. He needs some deodorant. I used to not do that. I used to not do that. You know why I used to not do that? Now, see, now see my background was Baptist, and I used, to, I used to do a little undercover arm hand. I used to do a little this. That's what I used to do. Now I'm, like, now I'm just like this. Yeah! So, but here's why. Here's why. Here's why. When I do that, and I did it this morning, I did it this morning. You know what I feel? Nothing. Nine times out of ten, I don't feel nothing. And so when I don't feel nothing, and we're singing some amazing truth, like, God, you lifted me up. Man, that's awesome, isn't it? God, you lifted me up. I was drowning. I was sinking. It was over. And you reached down, and you lifted me up. And I sing that a lot, and I don't feel nothing. But God's done that for me. And I feel like when I say that, I should feel something. Don't you feel that? I feel like something should happen inside of me because I've experienced God reaching down and pulling me out of the pit. And so here's what I do. I lift my hands and I say to God, God, I want to feel what I'm saying right now. I'm not going to wait till I feel it. I'm going to worship you because you're worthy of it whether I feel it or not. If I don't feel it, you're worthy. If I feel it, you're worthy. I'm going to worship you. I'm telling you, church, if you will do that, God will show up. Don't you quit this church because you don't feel nothing? Well, I'm going to go to another church till I feel something there. I'm going to call that pastor, pastor and tell him what you're saying. Don't you do that? Man, you stay faithful. Some of you are about to quit your marriage. You don't feel nothing. Don't you quit that marriage. You stay faithful. He says, my soul thirsts for you. 
You know, a lot of times you've got to work at something to create a thirst, don't you? And here's what God is challenging us to do as we're walking away from this relentless series. God is saying to our church, Summit, I want you to eat every single day. I don't want you to know about my love here, simply there. I want it to go from here to here. How's that happen? It happens by you and me getting desperate before God. Did you know that Paul wrote, Paul in that first verse we read, verse 14, Paul was on his knees begging God that they would be rooted and grounded. God, don't let them be rich and live like they're poor. God, let them experience your love. Let it absorb deep down in their soul. Let it create a thirst in their life. And I am telling you, that's what God wants for you today. So as we are wrapping up this relentless series, I want you to know that God loves you and with a love that is wide and long and high and deep. And he wants you to experience it every single day. And maybe for you, it simply starts by saying, God, I want to be thirsty now. God, I want to be thirsty now. God, I want to be faithful in seeking you every day now. I put out something on Facebook and Twitter this week because we're ending in the relentless devotional that we've been putting up on Facebook and everything like that. I've tweeted something out this morning, a crazy love devotional it's called. It's seven days. The only reason I did that is because some of you need to read that when the relentless devotional is over because God wants to use that to create a spark in your life. Keep showing up. Keep being faithful. Keep pursuing God. And God will show up. Because God is relentless.